Hey guys, what's up? Today we are talking about the basics of acrylic painting. It is a medium that I use very frequently and there's a lot of things I really love about it that I think you might enjoy too. So first you should start off with what are you going to paint on because the type of paint you choose might be a little bit different. Now when I got started I didn't know any better. It was before I even entered college I started dabbling in acrylic painting and I had purchased craft paint which is typically sold in little bottles like this and you can find it anywhere including Walmart, um, big box stores like that, uh, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any craft store really, they usually carry these and they're really affordable. That's part of the reason why I had started with that because they're super cheap. They can range anywhere from 50 cents US dollars to three dollars depending on quality, um, specifics of them. And this is just a basic acrylic craft paint but sometimes these bottles also have different types of usage like um, they sell enamels for glass and um, stuff like that that come in similar bottles. <clears throat> um, some other forms that you can get and the kind that I would actually recommend if you're going to be painting on canvas would be to get the tubes that look like this. Um, these such as the Windsor Newton, these run about um, 10 or so dollars in the US and heavy body ones like this um, and I'll explain a little bit more about their consistency in a moment and the Liquitex Basics um, that look like this. This is a great starter brand in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> the big box stores also have their own house brands too that sell very similarly. They're usually in the same section. But these are not found usually in the same section as bottles like these. These are usually in more craft areas whereas these will be in the paint areas where you'll find canvas, oil paints, watercolors, stuff like that. And these are the ones I really recommend. Not these. While they are really cheap and it's very um, tempting to buy these instead, especially if you're on a budget, they are very watery. Their pigment load is very low comparatively. And um, they're just, they're not all that great for canvas painting. So these are the most common forms you will find if you are painting on canvas. Um, there are a couple of others that I don't have examples of. Um, you can find it in more liquidy forms, fluid forms, but if you're just getting started, I would recommend going for a small basic set of something like the Liquitex Basics. I like Liquitex for another reason, because um, all their acrylic stuff is intermixable, so if you get things in their line, you can include it in one piece. And I'm not in any way sponsored, it's just a brand that I've liked and used for a long time. So what I mean by intermix ability is that they sell like markers and spray paint and um, different forms of acrylic and you can mix them all together. There's also a lot of different mediums that you can add to your paints that will yield different effects. I'll talk a little bit about mediums in just a moment. So once you have your paints, the next big thing you're going to need is what are you going to paint on? And there are a million different options for you. I'll talk about the most common. Uh, you can do something like a canvas, and that could be something like this where it is on a stretched wooden frame. You can buy these pre-made, or if you're really into it, you can learn how to make the frames and stretch your canvas yourself. Um, learning to do it yourself is pretty economical if you plan on painting big and really go at it like at full time. But for me, I've made them. I find it terribly time consuming. I'm not that good at it. Uh, for me, it's just much easier to buy them pre-made. So <clears throat> this is just a small pre-made one that you can find at a store like Michael's. You can also um, find this is what's called a canvas panel. It's a very thin board that has a canvas covering um, and then they usually have printed information where you can write down or they can blank or you can write down info. Um, these are great for studies. They're stiff so if you are working on canvas, you'll notice that there is some flexibility, especially if your canvas gets stretched out. And there are things you can do to help either prevent that or correct it once it does get a little bit saggy. But if you are just getting started and you really just want to play with the medium, I would suggest maybe going for the canvas panels because they are a lot cheaper. They are so much thinner and they're easy to store and they're frameable. Typically they come in very um, frame friendly sizes and if you're not quite sure if you're going to like it or not, it's nice to have that option. Canvas can get very, canvas, stretch canvas can get very um, space consuming 
as you progress and paint more and more. And if you don't have the space, this is a really nice option. Some people don't like the flexibility of a stretch canvas, so another option for you is to get boards. Like this is a masonite type board that has been gessoed with a texture. Um, you can also purchase your own masonite uh, MDF board at wherever you can find it. Typically you can find it at um, hardware stores and even have them cut it down for you if they have a machine and a worker available to do it for you. And if you do it on boards like these, you can gesso it yourself. That's also a very economical way to go about it. This one was purchased ready to go, and it does have these very um, convenient keyhole hangers. And this one is a little bit thicker, so um, you can do what works for you. There's also something called um, canvas sheets. So this is like canvas paper. It is, this is a big pad, but you can find it in different sizes. It is actual cloth that has been gessoed, and you can tape this down to a hard surface to work on, cut it down if you want to, or get like a smaller size, whatever works for you. Um, but if you're gonna use this, I would recommend actually taping it down to a hardboard if you possibly have a big um, clipboard or even a cardboard, anything big, bigger than this, you can tape down some edges and work with it there. If you, again, think about the finished piece and what you plan on doing with it. If it's just a study, it really doesn't matter. But if you're going to do something that you want to keep for a long time, uh, maybe frame or hang, you'll want to think about your dimensions. And that's something that I neglected to do for a long time. I would just paint on any size or um, work bigger and then end up chopping it so that it fits in a frame. Custom frames are pretty expensive, guys. If you're not making it yourself, you should be considering these things. Um, it's very easy to cut it a little bit bigger than your frame, leaving borders, especially where you're going to have it taped anyways. That's another option for you to work on. You can also paint on plain paper. Um, sometimes people suggest that you actually gesso the surface of your paper to give you uh, either texture or a certain type of absorbency. And I would recommend trying it without the actual gesso and with gesso. If you were painting in oil color, you would definitely need to cover your paper with gesso, but with acrylic, you don't necessarily need to do that. It does absorb and dry quite quickly though as the paper just sucks it all right up. Another thing you have to have when working with acrylic paints is somewhere to rinse out your brushes. Um, you can use jars, empty jars, empty cups. Uh, I like to reuse stuff as much as possible, so I have this that I use specifically for acrylics, and it's really dirty. You can see that the paint just kind of sticks on to it. That's fine though. Um, uh, acrylic is kind of like plastic and a little dry like plastic so if I really wanted to I could scrape this off but it's more trouble than I feel like it's worth it doesn't matter to me if it's dry it's not gonna get into your paint um, and it doesn't matter so I like this one because there's two walls there is a uh, one that has a textured bottom and the other one doesn't they are very easy to find it even has little holes all around the edge where you can place your brushes when they're not in use like so I don't really use it unless I am constantly swapping back and forth between brushes because really you shouldn't be leaving your brushes like this to dry. But you'll need somewhere to dip your brushes to clean them out when you're changing colors. This is also nice because of the two wells. I can keep one a little bit cleaner um, for lighter colors or diluting or whatever the scenario might be. It all depends on what I'm working on and my process might vary from piece to piece depending on that. Okay, so next up we have brushes. You'll want probably a variety of brushes. This is a small assortment of the ones that I have dedicated solely to acrylic. And I do recommend that you keep your brush types separate. If you are, if you dabble in other paint mediums, like say you do watercolor, acrylic, oil, whatever they may be, you'll want a separate set of brushes for each medium because they, like oil, it's not going to wash out that well and you'll probably find that you like different types of brushes for oil anyways. And for your watercolor brushes, those tend to be a lot um, more delicate. And sometimes paint doesn't wash out that cleanly and your brushes will last a lot longer if you keep them separate and use them for different purposes. So this is, again, a small assortment of some of my um, brushes that I use strictly for uh, acrylic. and. I do recommend that as you go through it, you'll figure out what kind of brushes you like. I prefer 
synthetic brushes for acrylic. I like the way they feel. They're snapback. Um, these are all synthetic type brushes. You can get coarser ones like this. This is more of a um, bristle type. Bristle types are really good. Like a hog bristle would be really good for um, oil because of the thickness of oil. But it really, it depends on your style and what you're doing with it. Uh, I prefer synthetics as well because I try to be a little bit more eco-friendly, animal-friendly, so I tend to kind of steer that way and thinking about those things. Even with watercolor, some of the br best brushes they say are Kalinsky Sable and Squirrel, and I don't really have any of those. I, I tend to always look for the top-rated synthetic versions of those um, because I love their little furry friends and I don't want them to be harvested for that. Remember that your vote is your dollar. What you buy, you're creating a market for. So if that matters to you, make sure you're doing a little bit of research and getting the things that you care about. Um, <clears throat> so when you're using any brush, some things about working with acrylic, you'll want to make sure that you don't let paint dry in them because, again, it's kind of like plastic. Acrylic dries very, very permanent on your clothing and on something like a brush. Um, so you'll want to rinse it out very well while you're working and when you're done with your painting session you'll want to come thoroughly wash it out with some kind of brush cleaner and there are a variety of things you can use you can use a mild soap a mild hand soap or dish soap or better yet you can get a specific brush soap um, that is made for painting uh, I like the insert picture here I don't remember the name off of the top of my head even though I've been using it for like a decade um, it's the master's brush soap cleaner and it comes in a little cake plastic thing um, that you can swirl your brush around in, work it in there and rinse it out. You'll want to be very careful of getting the paint out of the area closest to the metal piece here. This metal piece is called the ferrule and you have the handle and then you have the brush end, the bristles. So to take care of them you'll want to never leave them submerged in your water especially if you have wooden handles because wood is porous it'll suck up that water. Your handle might split the varnish or lacquer coating on it could crack and split. The glue that holds the brush handle to your ferrule could break down and your brushes can come apart. Um, if the brush is not crimped, if it doesn't have what's called a crimping where it is literally pinched off by some heavy force to make it stick to the wood, um, all of it can come apart. So you'll want to be very careful with it. Uh, treat them gently. Make sure you wash them after each session. You'll get a lot more life out of it if you do so. And I have known people who, again, didn't care. They bought the cheapest brushes and didn't matter if they broke down or they didn't last. They would t toss them away when they were done with them and sh just get new ones. That might be tempting, but it's very... Um, unsound economically and for our environment so I really hope that you don't do that also cheap brushes I mean you really can tell the difference you can try them side by side and you'll feel loads of a difference and a lot of times with the cheaper brushes the hair actually falls out when you're using them or breaks uh, it can come out from the joined end or the hair itself could split because it's really cheap that's not ideal and it's not cute to have rogue hairs inside your painting, unless they're cat hairs. Cat hairs are fine. Um, just kidding, that's kind of gross, but it happens and I have to go pick them out while they're still wet. Okay, so another thing that you need while painting an acrylic is a palette of some sort and there are a variety of options for you. We'll start with cheap and get a little bit nicer. The cheapest thing you can do are paper plates or styrofoam plates, but if you're going to do a disposable plate. I would probably recommend paper again for um, the environment's sake and you'll want the kind that actually is coated a little bit because like this one is uncoated and it'll just soak up all that paint right away. But I didn't have any to show because I don't usually use plates too often. Um, the other thing you can do that is pretty economical, you can use like a glass or ceramic plate You'll have to wash it really well afterwards, let it soak. Um, I don't like to do it because I don't like the whole cleaning process that much. I don't even enjoy cleaning brushes, but it's just one of those things you have to do. It's really, really worth it. I 
really recommend that you get into the habit of doing it after every session. The other <clears throat> um, option that for you that is disposable is to get a disposable paper palette. And this is one that I like because of the size. This is a 9 by 12 um, gray paper palette. And this one's gray because it's a middle tone. So when you're working with paint, if you have a middle tone, then it's a lot easier to see um, light versus dark. And um, it's not as deceiving as working on white might be. With watercolor, you would want a white background because your paper is going to be white. So you want to see how that color goes through. But, or the white comes through that color, but with acrylic paint or oil, uh, it's kind of nice to have a tone surface like this. A middle gray makes it very easy to see which way to go for your lights and, and your shadows. So this is tear off by the sheet. You can work directly on it as such, or what I prefer to do is to take off one sheet at a time, and these are semi-permeable, so that means that water can still kind of pass through it, and one of the things you can do is get something like this. This is the Masterson's Stay Wet palette. So it's basically a Tupperware that is sized for 9 by 12 sheets. And they sell their own sheets, the, the Masterson brand that has a type of paper that is um, like water permeable. And what it is is there's a sponge under here that you can keep hydrated. And the water passes up through the... Um, disposable paper palette and keeps your paints moist for longer. So acrylic dries really really fast and it, if you like to work with a lot of colors or you're working on something very big you'll want to keep your paints wet while you're working because if it dries on there then you're not going to be able to work with them. They'll dry solid. If you mix a particular color and you're not that good at color mixing yet you might not be able to get there again especially if it's a more complicated color. So this is very, very handy. This empty spot right here, I don't really use, but it came with little cups and a holder for those cups. So if you were going to mix mediums or have larger amounts of color, you can have it here. So I like this. It has a tight lid on it where you can keep all that moisture in there. Just make sure if you're using these that you keep that um, sponge wet as long as you're working on that particular palette. You can throw away the paper when you're done, when those colors are no good or you used them up and there's no more mixing room. Um, very handy. Make sure you wash out your sponge every now and then too though, because sponges, wet areas can breed bacteria and that can be really gross. Okay, so mediums. Mediums refers to when you say in what medium you can be talking about. Is it in acrylic or oil or what have you? But there are also things that you can add to your paints. Um, in acrylic, there are a variety of mediums that you can use that can, can change the texture or sheen of the paint. So like this one is a Liquitex Slow Dry Blending Medium. This makes the paint be open longer and what that means is that it doesn't dry as fast, which makes blending a bit easier. This one here is a palette wetting spray that you can just use to hydrate your palette to make sure that your paint doesn't dry there. There are also things like glazing mediums and a matte medium um, and they're just liquids or even you can buy gels, um, molding paste, all these things you can add to paint. The paint can give it color. Typically these are in clear or uh, white forms and the purpose of that is really to just change how the paint either works or looks when it's done um, drying. And there is a big, big misconception that you can just water down acrylics and you can to some degree, but I really don't recommend it. Um, the pigment of, of acrylic paint is held together by polymer um, bonds, and they're like chains that of, I guess, what are they, emulsifiers that hold those pigments together. And the more water you add, you're breaking apart those bonds. So what can happen is your paint might not last that long, the color doesn't look as good, it could get thinner or weak, it could even chip. So I really, really don't recommend ever using too much water. I mean, I use a little bit myself, but they say that the um, the safe spot is about 20% water to 80% paint. If you think you're going to add any amount that you can count as a percent, I would recommend buying some different mediums. A matte medium is a really good choice, um, or a glass medium, and they would look something like this too with a cap like this. 
and a lot of brands make them, not just Liquitex. I just like and trust Liquitex. That's why I have so much of that brand. Um, but I really, really recommend that you limit how much water you add to your paints. Um, it does look and feel different, and if you do a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll you'll really be able to see what I'm talking about. All right, so here are a couple different forms of acrylic paint. As I mentioned before, this is the craft paint. And it's really quite liquidy by comparison to some of these other ones. Now, this might not be the best example since um, this one is a little old and has gotten a little thicker with time. But you can see it's not very thick at all. Inky. It's a little thicker than ink, but it's pretty thin. Just so we can see the difference. So I'm going to go in order of, I guess, quality. This next one is Fluid Acrylic, or Flow Acrylic, as you can find. Um, this brand is Artisoft from uh, Michaels. And I'll also do black in this one, but that's the same type of bottle. So you can already see that's considerably thicker. It holds its shape more than that pile did. You can even still see the brush strokes in that. You can still see the brush strokes there. Next would be that Liquitex Basics. Ooh, that's a bit much. So this is a transparent color, but you can still see just how thick it is, how it holds its shape very well. The color is very saturated. I may need to show you one of these in a lighter color so you can really see the difference, because black, I don't really think it examples that very well. Next, let's do... The Windsor and Newton Galleria. Hopefully we won't waste as much paint this time. And again, you can see just how thick it is and how it holds its shape quite well. This is also a pretty transparent color, but you can see that it is very rich. Now for the Liquitex Heavy Body. And this is going to be the thickest. You can see that already. The Heavy Bodies are made for playing with texture, so whatever it looks like while it's wet, it will dry with that kind of texture. It's great for building up layers and texture. Holds the brush strokes and knife strokes very well. Some of these other ones can level out just a little bit, so if you're going for texture, you'll want a heavy body or a medium that you could add to it, such as a molding paste. This is not a molding paste, but molding paste you'll find in a jar and you can mix it up with it. Okay, so let's try some of these mediums. This matte medium, we'll try a little bit with one of the regular acrylics. And this is just a kind of whitish liquid. We'll push some over. And if you mix it with just a little bit of paint, you can tint it more paint if you want it thicker but I'll show you the difference between extending with a little matte medium 
I'm doing the same with water. So you can see it gets thinner. But let's try a little bit with water too. And you can already see the difference right there with the consistency. This gets kind of real thin, whereas that was not so much paint, but thinner consistency, just not that thin. So let's see the difference. So very see-through. Let's add a little bit more water so you can really see how it changes the more water you add. You can see it's breaking down a lot. And let's do the same here with the matte medium. So that's the first pile. Feels a lot creamier. Gives you a lot more even color distribution. And if we add more medium and more medium, we can just thin that out more without getting a gross texture like this one kind of did. So even more medium. That just works so much better than that. Let's do that again. So this is with water. And I had actually a lot more paint in there than I do here, but you can see that the breaking down is significant can see it real well up there. It might not make such a big difference if you're working on paper, but believe me, it'll really make a difference on canvas. This is going to break down, and if you try to paint on top of that, you're going to get a lot of um, difficulty with that. You might get lifting. The paint will break down as you add more and more layers on top, where that won't really happen to you if you're using an actual matte medium. So that just makes that blending so much easier. Using some medium instead of just water. You can also buy acrylic ink. This one's by Daler and Rowney. So acrylic ink is acrylic still, but it's very, very watery so that you can use it you can see how watery it is. So that you can use this with a brush, dip pens, and stuff like that. But the idea is you could still layer it with all of these. It would just be much easier to go fine with it. So you can see how the thinnest paint, the craft paint, really leveled out. The next paint is a little thicker and you can still see some of those brush strokes. So this is completely dry now. And the next one, I painted pretty thin but still really rich color. Same for the red and the acrylic ink. You can see how that works, it's real thin. And the heavy body, you can see just how much texture is still in there and then mixing with water just it doesn't look as good as this one does that we used the matte medium with the overall sheen is a little bit different too this completely absorbed into the paper since it was water and this one it says matte but there's just like a very soft sheen to it but it's even whereas this one and this one are not 